many of you might uh, be such Zelda fans that you've went out of your way to want to play the Philips CDI Zelda games, and then you're like, when you're finally playing them, you're going, oh, is that it? But uh, they're entertainment for what they're worth. And then, of course, uh, there's another game out there that is actually arguably considered worse than even the CDI Zelda games. I'm going to play that right now. And for what it's worth, I find this an entertaining game as well. I mean, uh, games that are bad can be good as well. But we're going to try this out real quick. And uh, it's actually with the Amiga update here. CDTV, we're going to play none other than The Town With No Name. And look, it's entertainment for all ages here. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this reminds me of something like a take on Clint Eastwood movies. Let's try it out with the PUA Stream Core, and let's check it out for a moment here. It's, uh, like I said, if you want to play some fun, bad games, you can play uh, Philips CDI, Zelda games, all three of them, and of course, Town With No Name for CDTV here. <laughs> okay, let's check this out. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the right control scheme here. You're going to have to go to Input. Actually, I meant quick menu control. Sorry. I've been doing the hockey bench so much here. And then you want to go to port one controls. And you want to make sure you're set to CD32 pad. There we go. Then we should be good to go on the game. We're going to check this game out. And I don't know what to expect here. And again, uh, for the very first time ever, I watched the Good, Bad, and the Ugly movie uh, probably in 2009. The movie just thoroughly impressed me. I mean, great, great movie. Loved the way it was like a panoramic, cinescope style movie. Excellent movie. Loved the entire Man With No Name series. And I actually saw Back to the Future too when they did a little bit of an Easter egg reference to Clint Eastwood, the Man With No Name, and it surprised me. From Fifth Four Dollars. Yeah, let's check this out for a moment here. Begin game. I'm not sure what to expect there, but we're going to try this. Uh, what do I want to do now? We'll head on into the town. Okay. I actually started watching Young Guns uh, 2 the other day, too. I'm a fan of both Young Guns 1 and 2. I love Western movies. What do I have to do here? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Foreshadowing. <laughs> Such an interesting game here. Oh no, where is he? Come on out, I want to shoot you, come on. Guess he's going to have to load again. Oh, he shot at my feet. Did I fail? Let's try this again. I think I got him this time. Yeah! It's like playing Dragon Slayer with lag. <laughs> what the hell? Gotta wait for an hour less of time, watch the days of our life. Whoa! What just happened? Did I just completely miss him and hit a flying vulture instead? Let's try this again, guys and gals. I mean, to say the least. What? Okay, this is entertaining as hell. I mean, as bad as it is, it's highly entertaining. They have a sense of humor here with some of this stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah! The vulture's friend came in. The buzzard's friend, whatever it is. <laughs> Jeez. So even though I missed him, the buzzer came in there. He's dead now. He's killed evil Ab's littlest brother. And that means trouble. Shh. What's going on here? This is ridiculous. A town with no name. I mean, highly entertaining. You're going to be able to play with the update. I'll do a tutorial on how to set bios and such up, but... The game is ridiculous. It is interesting, to say the least. Oh, we're going to go to another CDTV game while we're here. Uh... Let's do a shmup. We need to do a shmup right now. Look at that 3D glorious box art worker. We'll do Battlestorm. Okay, yes, I'm actually going to be playing Town with no name again. Entertaining game, to say the least. And I'm finding it more entertaining than the Zelda CDI games. And I'm sure the people who worked on all of the above have went on to much, much grander things in the development video game scheme of things. And if you have any issues with controls, you can go back into controls and uh, go to the controller. Just uh, go back to the CD32 pad. Okay. Let's see what this game's like shmup wise. Okay, Titus. They've made some pretty cool games. If I remember correctly, aren't they behind the Top Gear games? I'm trying to remember correctly there. Okay, let's check out this shmup. And the screen's a little bit zoomed in, but what I can do actually to get it to be zoomed out, and this is the way the core works. I'm going to go into controls here. 
and go to part one controls. It's a little bit unintuitive at first until you get used to it, but I'm going to go to uh, normal controller here. And I'm on the small screen there. And whatever, uh, you want to be the opposite of what you're going to be in, kind of like doing reverse helicopter controls in a flying game. And then I'm going to go back to quick menu controls again. And I'm going to change it back. Then it should be full screen. Like that. And then I gotta make sure I'm on the right control. There we go. And again, if you have no input, just switch to another controller, then right back and you'll have your input. Okay, let's try this out for a quick moment. Should have a really cool soundtrack because it is a CD based game. If I stay here, can I just listen to the music? Nope, enemies are coming there. The drum beat sounds like it's from like a YouTube song. The initial intro uh, drums. Interesting game, has a little bit of uh, original Thunder Force and Herzog's Way uh, style feel to it. Very, very interesting game. Digging the soundtracks for these games so far. I mean, both this and Town with No Name had interesting soundtracks. But this is a pretty interesting shmup here. And actually, I'd have to say one of the coolest shmups of all time is actually on CD TV. But right now, it is currently broken. But I'm going to try to do something about an issue about it and try to get it working. But let's try another game here. Let's try a Prehistoric. Real quick. Titus again. And see how this plays. But yes, uh, one of the coolest games on here, unfortunately, does not work, but you can play it through the core, nonetheless, playing another version of it, which I'll show you in a moment. I'll demonstrate the game, because it has a badass soundtrack. I want to go back to the town with no name, because I got the buzzard, and uh, instead of the normal person, but you can actually shoot the guy, too. I've done that, too, in my last example, but, so it has a, almost like the Laserdisc game made by Konami called Badlands feel to it. Kind of interesting. Prehistoric by Titus there. And I love the caveman games as well, of which there are quite a few of these. We got Bonk's Adventure, Joe and Mac, and so on. Let's try this for a moment. And again, if I have no input, I can go to controls here, just like this. Change to anything else, then right back, and I should have input again. Okay, 1991. CD-based game, 1991. Not bad. Try it one more time. We'll go to retro pad, then CD32 pad. And right back, we should be able to control now. There we go. Again, if you have any issues, just change to another controller and right back and you'll be fine. Especially do it in the part where you actually have to push start to get into the game, to initialize the game. Another catchy soundtrack here. Oh, I love that swap there. That is awesome. I love that little flick motion there. Digging the soundtrack here. Love what they do with the soundtrack here. As far as caveman games, there are quite a few of these cool caveman games out there. I'll have to showcase the other two games real quick in this video as well. Bam! I love that little whip rush there. Pretty cool game. No! And Joe Mac is a fantastic game, so is Joe Mac too. Oh, they need I need more games with that type of transition. That is so cool. Whoa! I forgot I have to push up the jump. One thing you gotta do is actually push the up button to jump in a lot of them again. Don't forget that. It's like a little wood. Oh look at that. They got the good dinosaur going on there. Okay, I can't go up that way, but I can go up this way. Okay. Interesting game to say the least. Oh yeah. And then it gets even more challenging. Not a bad game. I'm actually enjoying this game. Definitely gonna be something I come back to. They get through here. Maybe there's some really incredibly cool bosses at the end of the stages that take up the whole screen. Who knows? Might be like the first time I played the first, uh, one of the bosses in uh, Mega Man 2. You know, the big dragon boss. I need more energy. Oh, I'm loving the drum beat, so that percussion is amazing. Oh no! Oh jeez. That percussion is awesome as hell. 
Oh, jeez, that monkey's throwing. Fun, fun game, though. Definitely cool. 1991. Way, way better music than other games from 1991 as far as that. Okay, we're going to go to another game that's like it, since I'm thinking about this right now. We'll go to uh, my main folder. What do I have? We have uh, Bonk Adventure Arcade. Bonk's Adventure Arcade, should we say. We played that with Main 2003 Extreme, the work in progress update. Bam. Love all the Bonk games. I mean, this is a damn cool game. You'll see for yourself, Aaron. It's the arcade version. What's cool about this is you have a two-player mode activate as well as a level select. So this is a very, very cool game indeed. And it works on MAME 2003 Extreme. Check it out. PC Genjin, a.k.a. Bonk's Adventure. So you can do level select. How awesome is that? We'll go right to stage six here. It looks kind of cool. See what we have to work with here. Love this, uh... Symphonic style music, which reminds me quite a bit of the uh, FM style music I was playing in my last Sega Master System video. Oh, jeez. The challenge level is already off the, off the deep end here. Crazy. Am I stuck and get a... Wow, almost need to go back to the first stage. This challenge level is already going to be a little bit more uh, difficult than expected. You can see the game definitely amps up in difficulty quite fast. Awesome stuff here. We need our two-player mode activate here. Let's see how two-player mode activate works real quick. Input hockey binds for player two. Set the controller to PlayStation Classic. And we got two bunks on the screen at once. That is awesome. That is sweet. No. It's going to be a lot harder to play in this stage, though. I almost need to go back to the first stage again. Wow, this is insane. This is absolutely crazy. This is going to be a fun two-player mode activate game without a doubt. I made it through the stage, at least. Definitely a challenge. Cool as hell. Let's try restarting now uh, real quick. Oh, actually, let's see what happens. I should be able to pick another stage. Cool game. We're gonna have to play the, uh, there we go. Oh, you can do them all. That's awesome. You can clear them all out in your own specific order. That is beautiful indeed. It's definitely gonna be a game I'm coming back to. Two player mode activate for the win. Sonic, uh, she was a box adventure style. This is so sweet. Two player mode activate. Definitely for the win here. I love this music. The gameplay is just playing so awesome here. And then we're going to have to do some other caveman style games. And again, uh, Bugs Adventure is also on the original uh, TurboGrafx-16 AK PC Engine 2. But yes, this is playing awesome here. So fun. You can get your rage moves, you can take up the entire screen, like groping like uh, in the Mario game on DS, of course. Cool. Awesome stuff here. Let's play. Now we're going to play the shrub that you couldn't play on CDTV, but we're going to play it via Amiga right now. Uh, we'll do it right now. Right here. Should be Xenon 2. Right here. And tremendous game, fantastic soundtrack. Such a fine, fine shmup game, and unfortunately it doesn't work currently on CD TV, but we'll try to get it working in the near future. I'm really hoping, because it has such a phenomenal soundtrack, but the soundtrack here is still great as is. I mean, the Amiga version is far superior to any other version of it other than the CD TV version. We're going to make sure we have the right control scheme here. Controls, uh, port 1 controls. We want to make sure we're on uh, retro pad here, and I don't want to have any other controllers active here. Uh, we got to go to input hockey binds. Make sure I disable the other controllers that I was using in the other video. Uh, here we go. Change it back to disabled so I don't mess up anything else. There we go. We should be fine again. Then we want to make sure that the control for this is fine. Okay, we're good. And we got our menu here to signify that we're correct there. Select button changes between the joypad and the mouse. Our R1 does our little uh, overlay there. And we can do L1 for the keyboard, but we're going to play the game now. And great, great soundtrack, and this is a, a fantastic schmuck. 
This is a nice sample song, which uses a little bit of uh, element melody-wise from the assault on Precinct 13, which of course John Carpenter did years ago. But you can see the artist that actually redid the song here, right here. Bomb the bass. And fantastic art, some incredible music. And there are quite a few artists in this game that are awesome. Great shmup game with a little bit of a level up motif as well. But we're going to play this game here for a moment. And you can actually earn uh, money in the game, currency, to buy weapons and upgrades. It is awesome. It is a very, 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 very difficult game, though. I mean, you're probably not going to make it very far the first time. It is so challenging. Uh, load level one. I know I'm going to end up getting my butt kicked here. It is such a challenging game. It is insane challenge from the get-go here. Okay. And I don't have the... I can push the start button to go full screen there. Oh, no. That yellow meter on the bottom there is my health meter. And yes, it goes down very, very fast. You can get instant death, too, depending on how you play. Whoa! I'm already almost dead. Let's try to get through this, guys and gals. If you make it far enough in the stage, you can go to a shop and buy upgrades and such. I'm hoping I have enough money to buy some health and turbo fire mode activate. Yes, you can actually buy turbo fire and such. But there are checkpoints, luckily. But listen to this amazing music. I mean, listen right there. Seems like there's no music right now, but watch what happens. You'll hear for yourself in a moment here. Right there. How awesome is that? The music continuously played. It did not restart over. It just chimed right back in. See if I can make it to the checkpoint now and get my shop. Kind of reminds me of the very first time I played Ashley. Ashley was quite a, a difficult game as well, but I'm so much better at it nowadays. This music is so catchy. It's going to be stuck in your head to the end of time now. Need some more power-ups and upgrades and such. Awesome game, Xenon 2. Here's another other little Jessica Qua here. If you actually want to backtrack, you can push down and you can actually thrust backwards for a few seconds. That's a nice little thing. You don't do that in many uh, shoot 'em up games. Usually you're on a force scroll, especially in games like Life Force, the vertical stages. There we go, scroll backwards here, try to take out some of these enemies. Hopefully I can make it to the checkpoint here. Again, it's not easy. Whoa! Instant death there. I got a couple more lives, I think. Gotta watch out for them bad boys. Them snakes take me out in one single head. Them centipedes. But loving this game. Incredibly awesome. Let's see if I can make it through here without taking losing a life this time. Watch out for them little centipede monsters. Oh, jeez. Don't want to get hit by them this time. So you gotta worry about dodging them while you're fighting other enemies. I don't think you can actually attack these things. Look how much energy I just lost there. I need some more energy here, or a checkpoint. Whoa! You're just having a, a complete onslaught of enemies almost at all times. Oh, jeez. I got another. I'm going to continue here. I'll do KYL real quick. Try to do a quick continue here. This music is so catchy. It never gets old, though. I'll do one continue, see if I can do any better on my second continue here. Okay, let's continue. Continue game. Please start me in the same spot. Not over again. I want to start in the same spot. Yes, I'm starting in the same spot. Awesome. I have a better shot of making it to the stage now with the continue point. That is awesome. Definitely takes quite a bit of practice to get used to this challenging game. And we made it to the shop. Let's see how much money we have. Hopefully I have enough to buy something. I have 750 here. I could sell something. I'm going to sell that thing I just got. I will sell that get some more money. Uh, rare shop power one. No, actually, I'm, I'm not going to sell that. I'm going to keep that for now. I'm going to exit. And then I'm going to buy something. Let's buy, uh, we can buy more health. And if you actually click the button, it tells you what you're getting. I think this is Turbo Fire right here. Auto Fire. I'm going to buy Auto Fire. Give me the cash. Okay, exit. Okay, and we're back to the game with Auto Fire, but as soon as we die, we lose it. So hopefully I can maintain it. 
Again, an incredibly difficult game, but one of the coolest drops I've ever played. Please don't lose my turbo fire right away. Here we got turbo fire, we got my rear shooter, which I decided to keep for help. I want to be able to shoot behind me there. It's very, very useful. It's so much nicer with turbo fire mode activated here, but hopefully I don't lose it. Please don't lose my health. Crazy. Just keep up on these enemies, take them out as they pop on the screen. Turbo fire is definitely making all the difference. There's a the little orb there. What power up is that? Oh yeah, wipe all enemies at once with a nice cool black and white thing there. That enemy almost came up on me, surprise attack there. Turbo fire mode activate is definitely making all the difference here. Except I just lost a lot of health there, no! Need more health. Red Chip needs help badly. I need one more hit and I'm done. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Bam, I'm dead. Look at that awesome music there, but uh, at least I can continue right here, roughly. Not with Turbo Fire, mind you, but I can still push the button manually and still get quite a bit. But love the uh, little Jesse Qual of different upgrades here. Oh, that's getting challenging. Whoa. Love the little uh, crash noises. Maybe I can make it through this part this time. Bam! Love it. It is so cool. Okay, we got this, guys and gals. Keep on these enemies here. Don't let them overwhelm me this time. Oh, no! Almost got overwhelmed again. Great, gonna happen again, guys. Oh, one more life. Let's try this one more time. You can see this game is quite addictive. We're gonna try this one more time. Hopefully, I can pull this off. Love that it's not a pushover game. It really does require a uh, skill to play this game, without a doubt. Wish I would have kept my turbo fire mode activated, though. No. So far, so good. Come on. Don't take me out this time. Watch out for them surprise enemies. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to avoid losing all my energy here this time. Try to avoid them little hot spots there. Choke points. Oh, I lost half my energy already. Oh, no. I have a feeling it's going to get tough up here. Kind of in the confined quarters here. These things can shoot at me too. Okay. This music is so awesome. Great, great soundtrack here. Still have enough energy to have a chance to make it somewhere, I hope. Should have some more upgrade orbs pop up, I hope. There we go, there's one. Whoa! The enemies are changing their formation on me. They're surprising me. Just when you thought the game was getting a little bit easier, it gets even more challenging. BAM! You see, the game is quite challenging. 